Good morning everyone, good morning guys and girls. Hi, hello, my name is EJ and I'm back again with another narrated art time lapse video for us to take a look at and dissect and learn a thing or two from. Uh, this is my gig, this is my jam, this is what I do. I do narrated art time lapse. <laughs> so yeah, um, before I proceed on how I got the idea for this particular artwork, I guess it's important for me to talk about what's going on in the screen right now because what's going on in the screen isn't going to last for very long it's going to go on for just a few minutes so i guess it's very important for me to just go ahead and just talk about what we're seeing so what we saw not too long ago was a character made from mblab dot mblab.com from mblab it's a plugin for blender it creates characters it's an awesome character um and so basically in order for me to well i, I didn't really need the mblab character creator but it's always helpful to kind of help me figure out you know perspective issues and lighting issues and whatnot uh, my main thing for using this particular character creator instead of just going with my original uh, sketch is that uh, I knew that the focal point of the camera was going to be very, very low. And so it's going to create a lot of distortions, which you kind of saw uh, not too long ago that the uh, camera is set up to be distorted and I kind of wanted it that way uh, I kind of wanted the character's uh, bright area to be closer towards a viewer uh, and then obviously the left side being farther away so um, that's part of the reason why I decided to do the MBLAB uh, character creator uh, not only that but uh, it also helps me with lighting issues you know um, I just do 3D in general to start some of my, a lot of my illustrations illustrations out, start out, <laughs> let me rephrase, a lot of my illustrations start out with 3D just so that it, I could troubleshoot quickly uh, perspective and lighting issues. So, um, and sometimes I do just random blocks, uh, random boxes for characters. Sometimes I use the Ambilab Creator which is what I'm doing right now. I decided that I was going to use Ambi Lab Creator. Um, and wow, there's like a bunch of errors that just popped up just not too long ago. Uh, MB Lab 1.78 is just really, really buggy for me. So I might have to downgrade my character creator because it hasn't been working very nice for me lately. But anyways, so that's what's going on. This is going to happen in the next few minutes is me creating this character. Um, MB Lab doesn't really have any presets for little children. And I knew that in my my character, in my illustration, is going to be a child, uh, an older child, somewhere around, you know, elementary age slash middle school age was what I was thinking. Um, and so I had basically had to tweak the character settings to make it look like a child. And what I did was I basically made the head bigger because children's head is bigger. Uh, the eyes are also bigger. Um, and some of the proportions are just a little off, like the nose typically is a little smaller. The mouth is a little bit bigger and whatnot. Um, so basically that's what I decided to do with this particular character is I basically change her to look like a child she's originally set as a young adult female young adult asian female but i just went ahead and just tweaked her settings and tweaked her looks just so that she could look like a little child and obviously the child in the illustration the finished illustration and you saw at the very beginning of the video obviously she's talking to fishes hunched over and bent over and so that's the reason why i'm posting this character just so that you know, she's hunched over and bent over, and it looks like she's talking towards the fishes. And so, yeah, there goes that camera distortion that I was talking about. Um, I'm gonna move. Uh, I'm gonna move the camera around a little bit more and set some of the lighting a little bit better. But as you can see, there's a huge distortion going on. Like the right foot is obviously lower on the plane than the left foot 
So you know that the camera's focal point is really low, uh, just so that you could take in a lot more of the scenery and it would just have that distorted look. But after this, I pretty much just rendered the scene out and then what I'm gonna end up doing is I'm gonna end up importing this that rendered scene into Krita um, so that I could work with it some more and finish my illustration um, in Krita with a speed paint. Now that I mentioned like <laughs> what's going on with the 3D and where it's going and whatnot, um, I guess now is a great time to talk about where the idea came from. So the idea came from this really cool sketch that I did for the Daily Spit Paint Group in, in Facebook. Um, I've mentioned this a few times in the channel. It's always worth mentioning and it's always worth uh, advertising a group because the group is a very very good group. It helps my uh, practice, my daily art practice a lot. But uh, the group has four prompts for you to choose from in any given day, every day. They always post four prompts and you can pick one of the prompts to draw an illustration from. The one rule that they have is that you need to finish the illustration in 30 minutes. That's it, 30 minutes. It's a very short time. It's uh, <laughs> It requires a lot of skills that I don't have, <laughs> so that's why I'm practicing in that group. But I did this pen sketch um, one time uh, for the prompt, and the prompt for that day, the prompt that I specifically chose was uh, talking to fishes. And it, I mean, it's a literal. <laughs> what I drew was pretty much a literal interpretation of the prompt. You just pretty much see the girl talking to fishes in the final illustration. So, yeah, um, I just went the literal route of <laughs> interpreting that prompt. There's nothing wrong with that, obviously. Um, the ending result of the illustration was pretty good. But anyways, going back to the original sketch that I did for the Daily Spit Paint, I did it on paper on my regular sketchbook. And it was a really, really cool sketch. Now, I could have gone and scanned that sketch instead and then based my final illustration off of that initial sketch, but I wanted to do the 3D again for the reasons that I've mentioned earlier. You know, doing 3D um, as my initial setup for my illustration helps me a lot with perspective issues and with lighting issues. In this case, she's backlit. Well, she's lit from the top, but the sun is slightly towards behind her. Um, so she's slightly backlit, which is always a tricky lighting situation. And... Um, the perspective, the distortion that I wanted to keep intact in the illustration. So I was pretty much very much after uh, those two things. So I went ahead and did 3D obviously instead of basing my illustration on my original sketch but the whole gist of the sketch that I did it remained intact in the final illustration. My sketch was this girl who's basically crouched over talking to these fishes. She looks like she's floating in water, um, which is basically like what I have in my illustration. Um, so yeah, uh, it's pretty much just a straightforward copy, basically of the original idea I have, except for a little tweaks. There's, all, 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 there's a 3D aspect of it, which was kind of a tweak, obviously. Um, so yeah. Um, but that's where the idea came from, and that's how um, this whole illustration came about. So um, now that that part is over, um, I guess now would be a great time to talk about what's going on in Krita. In Krita, I am sketching over the render. Um, as you can see, it's pretty much just straight tracing on top of the render. Um, I could kind of see where the clothing is based on her body. So you just see me put on her shirt, obviously. Um, the arm that I'm working on right now is just pretty much a straight um, trace over because I knew that I wanted the arm to be like that. The hands are slightly different. I didn't want to go through the trouble of posing the hands because I didn't really know what kind of hand gesture that I wanted. 
Um, so all of this is just straight from my mind when I just sketched that left hand out and uh, that was just straight from my mind so that was kind of cool how that ended up with because I didn't expect the hand gesture to be like that that was very cool and then obviously when I saw that hand gesture I'm like well I could kind of copy that similar hand gesture over onto the right and so you see that her, her right hand gesture is very very similar to the one in the left so obviously I had to differentiate it a little bit just so that it wouldn't look too repetitive um but for the most part it looks the same and yeah I just absolutely dig the hand gestures in this one um and so yeah, uh, the legs are pretty much a straight copy. Uh, the feet is again from my imagination. I had no choice. I have to basically um, draw the feet like the way I, if I feel that it should be, because clearly the three D one is a little bit um, deformed. Uh, that's the only thing I don't like with 3D characters sometimes is that sometimes the deformation can get very very odd and can get very weird looking um, as you can see on that render initially it was just way off <laughs> than what it really needed to be so I obviously had to tweak it a little bit and so yeah um, I had to totally made that foot off the scratch uh, from straight from my imagination basically and then same thing with the right foot and then same thing with the left hand so I'm basically sketching the girl um, the girl is kind of unique because obviously the character that I initially chose um, from MB lab was an Asian girl but somehow she ended up Caucasian which I wasn't really after any kind of initial race anyway so I just went ahead and flowed with what came about and this is what came about so that was cool um but yeah and then after sketching this girl out i'm just gonna sketch the fishes out and then i'm gonna go through my really really funky coloring process i love my coloring process i can't get over it some people kind of had warned me notoriously many numerous times about my coloring process because sometimes I create really really ugly color schemes with my coloring uh, process but with this particular one it came out very great like I love my colors in this one uh, which I could talk some more about it um, later on but what I really need to talk about is how my coloring process goes basically I take my random mech brush uh, I it's set to vary the hue a little bit uh, so if I pick yellow it would pick variations of yellow not just that particular yellow that I picked so that's how it does its painting and the random make shape brush just creates this really weird random shape so you'll see once I start my coloring process that I'm just gonna throw a bunch of chaos onto the canvas it looks messy it looks crazy it looks nuts but I guarantee you there's method to the madness. <laughs> as soon as I do all this crazy coloring thing that I do, I basically merge everything in one layer and then smudge them into recognizable shapes until I come up with this base paint, which is what I call it. It's basically um, the layer that I will put on my details. Um, so yeah, I'm basically trying to get to the base painting and here goes my crazy coloring process with the random egg brush. You can see I'm just going nuts. I'm just like, I'm gonna pick that color. I'm gonna pick this color. I'm gonna just put this color here. I'm gonna put that color there. Like, yeah, <laughs> very crazy coloring <laughs> process. But I love it and I'll explain it somewhere in a sec. But, um, yeah, I'm just going to smudge all of this after I do all my tweaks and whatnot. And then as soon as I smudge, I'll do my detailing. So yeah, that's what you'll watch me do in the next few minutes.
Okay, so now I have basically started my detailing process because I finally got my base paint. If you take a look at the lower right area, well, actually, it in the center of the image as well, or the center of the video as well, you can see that everything's fuzzy. Uh, nothing's detailed. I kind of smudged all the details out. I smudged the lines out, which is really important because I didn't want to keep the lines. I wanted this to be a painterly look rather than a comic book look. So obviously I had to smudge some of the lines out. But everything's fuzzy, but you could still tell that there's a person there, uh, that there's a little girl there, that there's a character. And so this is basically what I'm after because this is where I do all my details on. I basically work um, on top of the base paint because I paint in one layer. So... Um, and my detailing process is pretty much, you know, my standard routine that I'm pretty sure everyone does. Basically, the way I do the, my detailing is that I repeat this three-step process, which is I delineate my edges, meaning I make my edges sharper. I accentuate my shadows if my shadows need a little bit darkening, and then I add highlights. Um, for the most part... After I do my smudging, all the colors, um, I don't really regard it as much uh, because for me, what I really take a huge look at is the value range. Um, Marco Bucci has a really, really good video about uh, this particular subject. Um, he said that, uh, I can't remember what video it was uh, but if you take a look at one of his uh, 10 minute lesson videos um, I'm sure that you'll find this particular lesson it has something to do with colors and values basically um, colors are very very important uh, I mean I, I kid you not it's immensely important in your composition in your illustration in your piece colors are very important but for him what's really important is um, your line work your edges and value range and it's really true because you could tweak the colors to your heart's content well okay I guess a great example would be um, a person with green skin or blue skin or regular human skin um, if you look at all those different colors in black and white they should still all be the same so in order to make sure that your photo or your image or your illustration is looking good the best way for you to check if that's the case is to go to a baseline image which is the grayscale basically um, and that's where you kind of realize that you know you can really throw like a lot of crazy colors on your composition and still come up with a decent looking illustration just so long as you take care of the values which is really what i'm after in this particular piece um, you can see now when i started detailing the face that i added uh, some dark areas obviously because those dark areas needed to be darker the inside of her mouth is a great example obviously i needed to make that darker um Obviously, I needed to add eyes. Um, so, yeah, you don't really see me change a lot of the colors, the crazy colors that are on there already, because what I'm really after is preserving um, the value range. You know, so long as you have those lights to dark areas, your photo for the most part and your image will look good. So, now. Here is my own critique of my own piece, which would be the very similar kind of critiques that I would get from my friends at Sketch on that net. Uh, they'll say the same exact thing that I'm about to say to you. Some of my color schemes are just way too crazy, way too insane. But sometimes it works. Um, in this particular case, in this particular illustration, I really, really love how it's predominantly yellows and greens. Um, so it's very... Um, analogous color scheme if i'm not wrong let me double check my term before i start throwing in the wrong terms but if i'm not wrong an analogous color scheme are the color scheme that's right next to each other in the color wheel uh let me look that up um analogous color scheme involves three colors that are positioned next to each other on the color wheel ha ha lo and behold i was right <laughs> um Thank you, Google. So in this case, I have a lot of the yellows and the greens on there. Um, 
so that's pretty much my color range and i pretty much just stuck with that um so i love it um but the really cool thing about this particular color scheme that or my particular coloring process is that sometimes it gives me like really crazy color combinations the best example that i have on here is the girl's right foot or actually um it's the right foot in the original illustration but i have the illustration flip right now so right now it would be like her left foot um anyways her right foot currently left foot as of the moment is gray uh, and the reason why that foot is gray is because i accidentally left the original color of the canvas which was gray i technically left it on there because i forgot to put some colors on there and so when i smudge it the gray just kind of just blended in with all the browns and the hues right and you know, I could have technically fixed it to be realistically correct uh, and whatnot, but I didn't want to because I like the look, you know. Basically, what ended up happening is that her foot kind of looks like it has dirt on it. Like she's been playing on mud, and so there's mud kicked over her foot, and so that's why it's kind of grayish looking. And that's the reason why I love my coloring scheme, because sometimes my coloring process would give me all this crazy weird color combinations that I would never have consciously think about. I would not have consciously thought of putting gray on her foot to make it look like she played in the mud. You know, like I, I just, you know, I'm going on automatic, you know, I'm just going like pilot mode, <laughs> autopilot mode in this case, you know. Um... And so that's the reason why I love throwing all this crazy chaos at the very beginning that a lot of my artist friends are just like, dude, you're nuts for doing that. <laughs> and they're right because they have seen my ugly, ugly paintings. You know, I mean, I always post my daily sketches and my daily paint on the sketchzone.net. And once again, just, you know, to clarify, uh, sketchzone.net is a Discord group that I'm part of. We are not affiliated with the Sketch Zone podcast. That's a totally different group, just to let you know. But do check out sketchzone.net if you want to join our, our group. Um, we basically just help each other do our artwork and whatnot. So, yeah. But anyways, going back to sketchzone.net, yeah. <laughs> A-Gems and Lynx, uh, two of my favorite people from sketchzone.net, are just always on the lookout for for my weakness and they consider it as my weakness because i am really horrible sort of not horrible at that because even though i don't have like an active objective when it comes to my colors there is a method to that madness you know I throw in all that chaos in the hopes that i could come up with really cool color schemes such as the one that worked out in this illustration. Now, agents and links are right because more than half the time I get it wrong and I get super messy work, you know. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> get super messy work. But in this instance, it worked very well. It worked very great, and I really, really love it. I love the nondescript background, how, you know, everything's just kind of phasing to each other. Like the background, you just slowly phase into the foreground water. So there's not really a clear horizon line. I love that. I love that I kind of thought of making her float. See, there goes my value check. See, it checked out. See, I'm telling you. <laughs> Grayscale, man, it works. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, but yeah, there goes my point about why black and white matters a lot. Uh, you can have some crazy color schemes on there, but if you check it under grayscale values, you know, and if it looks good in grayscale values, then your illustration will look good, even with the, with the crazy colors that you decide to put on there. So, but yeah, I really like this illustration. I really do. It, it was a fun illustration that I came up with. Um... It was all just kind of accidental, um, and that's part of the reason why I do my coloring the way I do. I, I really like that accidents in there. As Bob Ross would put it, happy accidents, you know? So I'm always looking out for those happy accidents just to see what I could play with, and I could, 
you know, come up with. And in this case, I got a gray foot. <laughs> so, you know, I'm not going to complain because that gray foot looks really, really good. So I'm going to just run with that. <laughs> That's all I got to say. But yeah, um, that's the end of me tooting my horn. And at the same time, <laughs> making fun of my weird process. So yeah, uh, my own critique of my artwork. But this artwork's almost done. This illustration's almost done. And I am glad to share it with you. Uh, I'm glad that I got to share the successes of this illustration as well as some of the weird almost pitfalls that I could have fallen into. Um, hopefully this can provide a wonderful, wonderful lesson to the viewers who are watching this. So yeah. But yep, this is done. Just putting in the final touches. Final value check. Looking good. Saving my file work. <laughs> Uh, my file, always important to save it, obviously. And that's it. That's the end of the art process. Thank you guys for watching this with me. I hope you learned a thing or two. Um, I'll watch you guys in the next video. Like and subscribe. Good night.